I'm super happy to be here. Please, if you do have any question, let me know. The goal here is to be a super pleasure discussion around Java technology and especially the future of the platform. Because right now we are discussing what my coming out in the Java Jakarta 11, okay? If you are not familiar with Jakarta 11 or Jakarta specification, the first question that you might come out of your mind, am I using Jakarta right now? If you use Java, probably the answer is yes, because Quarkus use Jakarta, it's spring use Jakarta because we do have several specifications in Jakarta where several frameworks and platforms are using right now. So if you are using uh, Spring, Quarkus, Micronauts, and so on, you might be familiar with any kind of specification. If you are using Tomcat, if you are using uh, Wildfly and so on, the answer is yes, you're gonna use uh, you are using right now Jakarta technology and Jakarta, Jakarta standards. Today, I will cover more around the two persistent specifications. I'm presuming that you already know the Jakarta persistence, previous known as JPA. Okay, so I will start with Jakarta NoSQL and then move on to Jakarta data and finally do some live code, please. Here's your question. By the way, I'm super curious, where are you from? So please let me know where you're from or where you're based. Uh, for example, myself, I'm, I'm from Brazil, but right now I'm living in Portugal, a small city called Leiria. So let's start. I will start with Jakarta NoSQL. Uh, this morning I explained a, a lot about why we should care more around persistence, why it is important, the challenge, the migration process, how to do a tip. Uh, there was a book that I wrote with Karina Varela where I covered several points on specifications in Java, migration and so on. I also talk about Eclipse Store. Today, I will go directly to the specification, start with Jakarta NoSQL. So why should we care about NoSQL database? The answer is the number of solutions that I use in NoSQL has increased a lot. Um, right now, I'm just, I'm just showing uh, the most popular NoSQL, oh, ADL from Brazil, Charlotte. Jopi for Charlotte, USA. Nice. Oh, ADL, you, you are living in Portugal as well. Nice. So you are, you are, you are close. Uh, the NoSQL database has increased in solution. You might not only use NoSQL database, you might combine that with SQL, but the idea and the whole idea is to explore more the philosophy around persistence Polyglot. What does that mean? Is the capability of giving it an issue? I choose the best database with the best scenario approach. That is the whole idea. Uh, here I will show the column family or what column graph document key value. Those are the most popular NoSQL database. However, as I said in the morning, there are much more NoSQL database. For example, we do have time series, we do have vector database. We have several flavors of NoSQL database, multi-model, where I combine another NoSQL, uh, another types into a single database instance. And that is the idea. So uh, right now we do have several solutions using Explorer and NoSQL database. I mentioned also the number of enterprise solution that has using, for example, MongoDB that is using Redis, Cassandra, MongoDB, and so on, okay? So it's almost impossible to escape of an organization that not use any NoSQL database. 
And based on that, we start to create and define specification around Jaka Java and NoSQL database. That is Jakarta NoSQL. We do have a framework that is Eclipse and NoSQL that is implementation of both Jakarta NoSQL and also Jakarta Data, where the main goal is to cover the four NoSQL database types. So wide column or column family, graph, document, and of course, key value. And on the other hand, we do have Jakarta data. What is the main goal of the main purpose of Jakarta data? The idea of Jakarta data is to create a specification related for persistence layer. And what does that mean? To have a specification that can work with relational or non-relational database, or even a, a different structure of database. For example, I do have my business layer. I can use, for example, the specification that we do have right now that is inside Jakarta data is the repository where I can use SQL or relational database. I can use NoSQL, one of those options that I say to you, or even a web service engine. And my client should not know the details about that, especially because, uh, in a data access layer. I don't care if the information comes from ATP requests. I don't care if it comes from relational database or no relational database. This simple here is with repository. So Jakarta data is our specification. We have more ideas coming up. Uh, for example, to have more patterns exploring the data oriented way, okay? And okay, I mentioned how important the persistence layer is, what is Jakarta NoSQL, and right now let's explain why. Why should we care about specification for NoSQL database? If you look right now, you can see a silly simple sample of four different NoSQL database. More precisely, uh, NoSQL with document type. So we do have ArongDB, we do have MongDB, we do have Couchbase, and finally OrientDB. Those four different NoSQL database, uh, they have several things in common. For example, they share the same NoSQL type. Of course, they do have particular behaviors, but even that, they have particular be uh, common behaviors that we can share. For example, here, I'm using different classes, different nomenclature to achieve the same results. That means create a document inside my document collection. As you can see here, I do have my base document class where I included name and value. Use the method add attribute. Uh, the MongDB, we do have append method in the document class. At Couchbase, we do have the JSON object with the put method and RNDB, we do have all document with the field. But as you can see, everybody is doing exactly the same thing. That is include a name and also the value. And that is the main motivation of Jakarta NoSQL is to take those common behavior using an interface and that is it. When talk about specification, most of the people talk about, okay, because uh, you need to enjoy document uh, specification only because I, in case that eventually I want to migrate database. So on this case here, I can easily migrate between ArongDB and MongDB. However, let's face it, it's not common to change database when you do have some product in production. It's happened, it's happened, but it's a, however, the frequency of that is pretty, uh, pretty down. But when we talk about uh, specification, we can think more about the cognitive load. For example, I can switch or I can use different NoSQLs with the same API. That's why, for example, the relational database is super popular because I can explain SQL, language, SQL, and based on that syntax, 
I can use in several relational database. I can teach using no, uh, I can teach one Postgres and the students can play in production in MySQL. And that's the whole idea, right? So we do have those four simple here. Of course, you can switch easily if you wish, but think about the cognitive load, think about how easy it is to use and learn and apply those notes to the database if I do have the same API. So instead of learn four different classes, four different methods, I do have a single one, a single way. Okay, so right now, what I'm gonna do is to explore the Jakarta notific uh, specification. So we're gonna have three different NoSQL database instance running. And then we, what are we gonna do? We're gonna create a Pokemon entity. So we're gonna create an entity. Right now, I'm gonna use a multiple way using record just to explore that right now we are capable to explore records to, to work with data, okay? And combine those into a single place. So I will come here. So I will show my code. So don't worry. I will put it in the presentation mode. The presentation mode. Of course, it's not running. Basically, what I do have here is a single Maven project with a cup of dependence. So I have my minimal dependency requirement that those are from CDI, from JSON. Uh, CDI stands for the inject dependency injection by specification, ESON for JSON. Configuration to define one single way exploring the trial effect application to change properties, passwords, and so on. And of course, the drivers of MongoDB, Couchbase, and RongDB. Furthermore, to don't waste our time and our imagination, I will use Data Faker to create several Pokemons for us. Okay, so I do have the idea. I have a of exploring three no NoSQL database switch between them, if without impact. So. I'm gonna use my Docker Compose here. So three service, Mongo, Arango, and Couchbase. I will start those C service here. So one second. Uh, I come here and no, I'll come here, open a terminal. Just give me one second. And then, and then I will uh, code, let's, let's do a thing here. So I will do code, workspace demo, uh, Jakarta, data, NoSQL, Kata data, NoSQL documents where, of course, I will do my Docker compose up. And right now, as you can see, I will start three different instances of NoSQL database. Uh, what are I gonna do next? Of course, I will create my entity. So I will come here. I have my Pokemon. And by the way, if you, if you if you have a question, please let me know. I will define here as record. And then I will define three fields. So string uh, ID, string name, and of course string location. And that is it. Right now, what I do have, I have my Pokemon uh, empty. The next step, of course, is to define annotation. So I will come here. I will define here as an entity. This way, this class you be persist in the database. And I also need to define each field's go to the database. So I will define ID as an ID, of course. 
And another two ones as column. So I do have my name, name and location. So done. I don't know if you are familiar with records, but the idea here is to simplify so to create immutable classes. So right now I don't need to create getters, setters, hash code, equals. I can override and of course I can create methods. Right now what we're gonna do, I will create a static method factory to create a Pokemon. So I have my Pokemon here of my faker and then give the faker, I will return a Pokemon. So as you can see here, I have my ID number, a Pokemon, a Pokemon location, and that is it. So right now I'm, I can, okay, let's define a static. So right now I can create my Pokemon from faker. I have my properties. As I said, I can overwrite everything in production using this environment. Indeed, what you can do, you can have properties to run locally in your machine. And then as next step, you can override that configuration. For example, here, I don't have user or password, but on production, if I wish, I can put that credential harder. So, I can create scenarios where the user, the developer does not know about that. So what I do have here, I have my document, my database name, that is Pokemons. I have my configuration for each database. So Couchbase has configuration, MongoDB has configuration, and RongDB has configuration. And then I have a provider. So I'm using here, I comment the another ones. So right now I'm using MongoDB, but as you can see, I will explore our MongoDB and Couchbase as well. So I have my Pokemon. I have my Faker class. What I'm gonna do now, of course, I will do a for it where it will run 100 times. And based on that, what are you gonna do next? Oh, thank you. I love this AI thing. Uh, I will create my Pokemon. Then I have a interface to interact with my database. With Jakarta NoSQL, we do have interface that's called template. Template is the, the bridge between our class and the database. Uh, based on that, we do also have specialization. So template is core, so all NoSQL can use it. But even more, what you can do next, we do have several specializations. For example, you can use document template to work with document. You can use column template to work with column key value template to work with call key value and so on. So the main idea here is to explore the power of OOP to, to uh, use a specialization and make the code more elegant. So it, there is one question here, what is SE container? Basically in CDI, the dependency injection specification, you have right now, I mean, not right now, it's after the version 2.0, right now we are the four, the capability of run on Java C. So it's a CDI container. So I'm him here, where I can raise up the dependency injection. And based on that, I can inject a field. So for example, here, what I'm, I'm doing, I will inject some uh, some document template, for example. So I can inject fields doing things like that. So right now I just replaced two document templates. And the idea right now is, let me show a little bit of code here. So I have my document template and I do the template here, right? So, um, the idea is to explore the specialization to put more capabilities if it does impact something else or everybody else. So I do have my Pokemon. I do have my document templates. My database is up. So 
uh, the next step right now is to to insert a couple of Pokemon. So I will insert 10 instead of 100. So I will run right now. So I insert it. And what I can do next? So let's come here. Let's exit off the presentation mode. And let's go, for example, to um, one second. Let's go to the console. So I will open a new console. The query is already here. And of course, when I run, as you can see, I'm connecting with local hosts of the MongoDB. And as you can see, I do have Pokemon. So I have Spiros, Tauros from those locations. So um arena city do so let's do a query right now so let's search for zubat what you can do exploring templates so what you can do is you can do queries so i will come here let's return again to the presentation mode um i keep in the template mode i have my template where are you template i can do oops Oh yeah, I'm injecting here, so I need to, to leave the loop. So I will insert and then do the operation. So I will do select. Of course, you can do a query like that. So we can do the query by text. It has some good points. It has some bad points. For example, you can uh, do a mistake and rename the name. Uh, but also, what you can do is exploring the Fluent API. So, give it a template here. You can do the select. So, give it a Pokemon here. I can use conditions. So, and the good the good point here is I don't need to first. I don't need to memorize things, and also I don't need to learn. Uh, no SQL, but I no SQL which one I'm using. So okay, should I remember the MongoDB query all the time? Of course not. So what are you gonna do? I will do a select. At moment, I will order by name. Then I will take the results. Come on. So uh, we need to define the order. It is ascending or descending. And then I have the option to, okay, uh, I want to return my results. So I come here for it, print alien. So what are you gonna do? I will include more 10 Pokemons and then do the select from order by name. So let's see what's going on. And as you can see right now, I'm returning more Pokemons. Okay, so I have the Beedrill, the Carte, Carte, Carte Pie, and so on. So as a next step, uh, Joppy did a good question. Is there aggregation dialects? We don't have it, it yet. We are working right uh, right now on it. That is that will be our next step. Uh, remember that it this is the version 1.0. So the goal is to have more and more abstractions. Uh, returning. So select Pokemon or buy blah 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 blah, and then let's do a query. So select Pokemon this time. I define one condition where the name is, I don't know why the AI loves Pikachu. No, no, don't use Pikachu. Let's see if I do have Pikachu to make you happy. As you can see, we don't have Pikachu yet, so no. So let's use Cortify. And then do order by name. So let's comment this line here. And let's execute the code again. So I will include more 10. 
and they do the query. So right now I'm returning a Pokemon, so Carty Pie, and it's returned to loca different locations, so Shalur City and then the Mio Town. And of course, what I can do, I can do conditions. So I can use, okay, and location equals, okay, you know more Pokemon than I. Okay, be happy with that. So Shalu City. So right now, are we are included more conditions? So I'm combined. And right now, it's returned two Pokemons, both with the name of Carte P and both with the location of Shalu. Remember, every single time I included more 10 Pokemons. Uh, let's do a little bit change right now. So I'm just trying with a single Pokemon, but right now I will close this one here and use a wrong to be. So right now I included the driver on the my settings. I already have the dependence on my Maven project. I will keep the same code. I will generate some Pokemons and then the Q the query. So I need just to change a little bit because I might not have Pokemon right now. So I will uncomment this one here and then comment this one here so so we're gonna do so executing query with condition so that I might not have it so let's execute run right now a different database So, of course, I don't have this condition, but as you can see, I inserted more 10 Pokemon, this time with a different database. So, different dialect. But if I go to my um, my query right now, so let's see. Of course, I already had some. So, let me put here, for example, Lapras, and then execute. As you can see, I do have Lapras from um, at my database, but as you can see, instead of using uh, MongDB right now, I'm using a RongDB. Or the difference, the driver, of course, the structure is a little bit different, especially because those are different database, right? Uh, for example, um, a RongDB had revision, um uh, information the pokemon has the id as usual it's a little bit different and also the key so those are the information that i do have right now and of course if i remove the filter it should return my 10 pokemon so i shoot venom venom nuts starting and so on so Basically, what did I do? I have the same uh, classes switch between database if without impacting my application. I don't need to learn new queries. I don't need to learn new configuration, at least on the developer perspective, because I do have a single dialect. uh let's check my time so i still have 15 minutes to go so basically what did i do uh what did we do so we do have the pokemon records we do have the nt the column and the location of course we did some queries uh we still work in an aggregation query for example and i showed the injection of template remember the template is the bridge between my application and my database. I do have a couple of specialization, like I said, so given my template or the specializations like document template, the specialization of templates for documents, column templates, graph template, and key value template, I can do a couple of single operations. And again, it doesn't matter each one I'm using because the dialect is the same. 
So as I said, you can use a specific behavior like the document template. And of course, what you can do more, you can use specializations. As I said, I have the template that is the core implementation of NoSQL database. And then I have a couple of specializations, document template to work with document. And then I have a RongDB template, MongDB template, Calculate template, where I can take particular behaviors because those particular behaviors matters a lot for us. For example, a RongDB, I can run with uh, a wrong query. MongDB with Mong, Mong queries and Couchbase with Nickel. So for example, if I come here, I can inject my Arango DB template. I can do the injection here. And right now, what can I do? So I will comment this line here. And then I can run Arango query language. So I can come here and I can do something super similar with that. So I will remove the filter right now just to make it easier. I will uh, put my Pokemon here and then I will return my information. So I come here, I'm returning a string. So what I can I do? I can do my classic for it. So right now I will come here as a Q team with Arango AQL. Yeah, that is fine, AQL. So hopefully it's gonna work. Otherwise we can move on. But as you can see here, I'm executing with my AOKL. So I switch my ID, it's returned my information, and that is it, okay? So that is the whole idea of exploring different NoSQL database. Um, I can have specialization to make it possible to work with. That's a good benefit. So let's return to MongoDB, for example, and I can also do or work with the Mongman document template. Okay. Uh, my time is, as you have 10 minutes, so I need to move quickly. So that's the idea. Why is the IG new when run with AQL? Uh, basically, we need, on that case, we do have a bug in the product that we are fixing in the new version, but it should not be new. So good point. So why is new? Uh, it is a bug. So that's what we are fixing right now. But what happened is when you go to MongoDB, we do have different way to work with IG and our MongoDB is a different way to work with IG. And we need to work to fix that. So we show the specialization, we show several specialization, and right now we also have the power to work with Jakarta data. The Jakarta data, as I said, is the specialization where you can work with several capabilities, exploring more the data patterns. At the first version, we're gonna work just with repository. But of course, the idea is to have more flavors. For example, we can have, for example, data access object, we can have data transfer object, we can have CQRS and so on. But at the first version, the one that we're gonna work is with repository. So what I'm gonna do, I will come here, I will create my Pokemon repository as an interface, my repository as an interface where I will extend my pageable repository. It is pretty similar if you know uh, 
is spring. Uh, we drink a lot of the spring idea and create, of course, this, this specification. So I do have an interface where I don't need to care about the implementation. I can do query by methods using convention, for example, list ID. So this way I can do a find by name. If it doesn't know the query exactly, so it's more domain centric way design approach. And I will come here. I will just to clean a little bit. I will create a second class. Here. Um, just to save some time, I will remove off my dependence. Uh, the two one here, so around DB and Couchbase. I will make ops. I will keep only the mount DB. I do refresh. The goal here is just to save, save us time uh, because. Okay, you should not be here. That is fine. Because uh, instead of render serialize that twice, three times, come on, we don't have time and you're gonna use just with MongoDB. Um, so I have my Pokemon repository as repository, and then I will inject. Right now I can use the save method. So the save method, what save does mean? So basically it's abstraction. This way, the implementation will check if the information is there. If it's there, it will insert. If it's not there, it will... Oh, sorry. If it's not there, it will insert. If it's there, it will update. So I will come here, it will save, and then I can do query by name. So for example, the favorite Pokemon of AI, that is Pikachu, and also I will take the find by name, the one that I know that is there. So I will inject, I will execute, and hopefully everything gonna work. So as you can see, what did I do? I inserted more 10 Pokemons, then I find by Pikachu, each we don't, ah, oh, we do have one, that's nice. And we do have a Taurus. So that is the main idea of repository. Of course, you can work, for example, with pagination. So give right now. Let's keep saving Pokemons. And let's create a page ball. So page ball, page ball, where? No. What I do have of page ball, why not? No. Of uh one where the size is two for example but for some reason i did the wrong import so i need to remove this page ball here and use the repository one sorry for that and right now what can i do i can do my repository uh find out with pagination I can do the for each or return as page. So that's what I'm going to do here. So that's my first page. I will print the content here. And then I will generate my second page. So I came here. Let's see page, next page ball, page ball one. And then I will do a repository, find out. And then page ball one with my page ball and do exactly the same idea. So page one, page two. One thing that I can do, I can do the order by. So in this case, I will put the name here. No, we don't need you here. One second. Yes. No, all the time the AI wanna work. But anyway, so I do have the page ball, and then let's start to run with pagination. So 
Let's see what's going on here. So I have the page number number one. Okay, why is she returning the same Pokemon? So I have the, the page of one. I have the size of, let's put the off size. Definer, this sort by ask, and let's execute again. So, oh, here, sorry. So right now I'm returning two by two. So the first one, I have two Pokemon, so uh, by the name, so Achikuno and then Bidrio, and then Bidrio and Bas, Bas, okay, I'm awful with Pokemons. But anyway, that is the idea of the pagination. Right now I don't need to do super complex thing. So I can paginate page by page, return next page, next page, until the end, especially because you can save memory doing this kind of approach, okay? Um, that is it for today. So let's see if you, we do have questions, not you. Um, let's see if you do have questions. The same thing happened here. We do have specialization, so we have data repository. We have a specialization such as query repository, pageable, and of course, we can explore the RongDB repository, MongoDB repository, and Couchbase repository. That is all for today. So hopefully you enjoy. And please let me know if you do have any questions. Otherwise, thank you. And I'm also available in social media as at Otavo Java on Twitter, on LinkedIn, uh, of course, Instagram and YouTube. So please uh, follow me on the social medias. It was a super pleasure to talk more about the uh, database. Okay. If there's no questions, thank you. Yeah.